it's amazing the, the number of parallels, despite the fact that Brazil and the United States have very different histories or very different countries, the, the parallels between the, the Trump experience and the Bolsonaro experience now for the last four years have been stunning. Um, and uh, I remember in 2018 talking to a lot of Brazilians, hoping that Brazil would not replicate the American experience. Unfortunately, it did. Um, and, and it's really striking to me how much, how consistently Bolsonaro seems to, to copy Trump, um, even though many of Trump's strategies fail. Bolsonaro seems to copy many. Um, that said, what, what are the important differences? I think far and away, the, one, of the, one, of the, one of the great advantages that Trump had that Bolsonaro does not have is a strong political party. Um, Donald Trump had a uh, a, a party that uh, for a while controlled the Congress that had uh, mass support and was behind him in a disciplined way, which made it impossible to impeach and remove Trump and makes it possible. Uh, it, it made it such that no matter what, Trump was never going to be politically isolated. Trump grew unpopular, but he never fell between below about 36, 37 percent. And he could never be politically isolated because one of two major parties fully supported him. Bolsonaro never had that uh, because of the nature of the, the Brazilian party system. Bolsonaro never really had a strong party. Uh, at least initially, he did not invest very much in building a coalition. And so it was much easier to isolate Bolsonaro. Uh, including from from some right wing political forces than it was in um, for, for for Trump. So that left Bolsonaro, I think, weaker politically than Trump. Um, turning it around, the disadvantage that Trump had, and you you mentioned uh, January sixth. J- January sixth was an attempt. It's something that in Latin America we recognize. It was it, well, in Spanish we call an auto golpe. It was an attempt by the president to illegally remain in power, to assault other institutions and illegally remain in power. Very, very common in parts of Latin America, unheard of in the modern United States. But one thing you need to pull off, to succeed with an auto golpe is the support of the armed forces. You need some cooperation by the armed forces to pull off an auto golpe. And Trump... um, dreamed of that, but he never had. He never had a chance because of the uh, very, very strong tradition of uh, a professionalized um, military. The military was never going to join Trump's adventure. That's less clear in Brazil. Uh, I think there are some signs that Brazil may go the same way as the United States with the armed forces unwilling to cooperate with Bolsonaro's adventure, but it's not so clear. Obviously, Brazil has a much longer history of military intervention, has a much more in, potentially independent military, and that military has been brought into politics by Bolsonaro himself. So the military, uh, it, it was frightening to me to see in recent years in Brazil, in the last decade, the military begin to kind of uh, act as an independent actor, uh, whether, whether it's the Lula trial or other events, there were times when military officials just took independent positions. That's something that doesn't happen in the United States. It's something that didn't happen in Brazil for for a few decades, and uh, hopefully, it was uh, it, it you know that that process of repoliticization of the military uh, doesn't continue in Brazil. But uh, but it's whereas it was unquestioned that the military was not going to intervene to help Trump. It's an open. It's more of an open question. It's uncertain in 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 Brazil. So that's that was a disadvantage for Trump, and maybe an advantage for Bolsonaro. 